Hey everyone, this is Sebastian with Smelling Great Fragrance Reviews. I've got Sultan Pasha here with me. Hello. We're going to sample some of his fragrances. What are we sampling today? Um, I've basically bought you the my sampler pack, and also I will be showing you all my latest compositions that I've uh, started um, in the last, I'll say, six months to a year, and uh, let you try them and uh, see what you think okay. and how, um, if they speak to you, speak to you, if they speak to you, it touches your soul. That's my aim. All right. Um, so I've given you this to you, the uh, sample pack, but however, I've got the full thing here. Cool. <laughs> um, and we're doing a giveaway of a sample pack. Yes. Oh, cool. we'll be doing two sample packs. We're doing two sample pack giveaways to two subscribers from... Wherever, I mean, yes. Okay. I, I send worldwide, so it should be... No worldwide, okay. Sam two sample packs worldwide. If you want to find out about the fragrances from Sultan Pasha, please stay tuned. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian and this is Sultan Pasha. Let's go ahead and get started. Certainly. Do we open this or, um, or you, we have them already? This is mine to take. This is yours to take. Okay. I have uh, I have all of them here. Okay. And uh, whichever I mean, you have the full thirty compositions here. Just tell me whichever one you oh, wish to smell. I am gonna need my glasses. Oh yes, you will. It's fine. Uh, the the new ones are I mean the new ones that I've released in the last six months is Ledo and the Ledo, which means golden hour. Le Ephemere, which is a uh, really powerful, dark um, and deep. Operatic rose. Um, we'll start with that. Yep, you want to start with that? Deep, uh, operatic rose. I'm, I'm all for that. You're all for that. Okay, 18. There we go. This, so, yep. So, your fragrances we dab on. Yes, we dab on because these are 100% um, oils and they're highly concentrated. So, you only need less than a drop. And uh, Really and truly, with regards to the samples, for example, because they come in tiny vials, um, it's best to use uh, a pick clip or a toothpick just as, just to dip in there. So, for example, they look like this. So, you could see that. And these are uh, PCR vials, or else used in uh, you know uh, for DNA biochemistry. But hey, I use it uh, for for my work, and. Uh, so in there usually is about two to three drops, which is sufficient for about uh, five to six wears. And what you do is just gently, you could just tip it over into your skin or you could dip a toothpick or a pin and just gently apply it and see how it behaves on your skin. And then you could make a calculated decision, which is the best composition that works for you. I always advise not to wear more than two composition per day mm. because these are, I mean, uh, these are incredibly complicated, uh, complex compositions, multi-layered. So they do go through different phases over over the many hours. Um, but of course, this is all subjective to one's skin chemistry. Okay. And because they are all, um, I tend to use very high amount of uh, naturals with very small amount of um, synthetics. And uh, the synthetics I use are what we call nature replicants. And I never use artificials. If oh, that wow. makes sense. Okay. So artificial molecules are molecules that you can't find in nature. Those I try to avoid. The ones I try to use are molecules that is already found in nature, but of course they it will call um, it will cost incredible amount of money to get them from you know from a natural source. So it's better for me just to use the synthetic variation. Um, so for example, in deer musk you have the molecules muscone and muscanone. Mm -hmm. So I instead, because in deer musk, you, the amount that is in the grains is about 1%, between 0.5% and 1%. Okay. So for you to be able to use that component, you know, uh, from deer musk, it will cost too much, incredibly, incredibly a lot. Mm -hmm. And of course, deer musk has got facets, which may be useful to your composition, uh, my composition, and some of it may not. So I just focus on the actual molecule itself and put that into the actual composition. Cool. And take advantage of that. Um, so, so which one am I smelling now? You're smelling Le Ephemere, which it's basically very deep and dark. Yes. 
spit and a malic too. Yes. Is it ambergris? Ambergris. Okay, I'm picking up the ambergris. Ambergris. Um, I use quite. I, I do like to use a lot of animalics in my compositions. Uh, primarily um, ambergris, civet, castorium. Um, deer mass I like to. I like to avoid. Uh, primarily because a it's illegal for me to use and also in the country that I live in the UK if I were to use that I'll be in deep trouble oh, so wow. I t tend to I, I don't use deer musk real deer musk in my compositions okay um, but I do use civet and uh, you can use you can still you, use you civet can still use civet you can still use civet I, I use ambergris which is allowed and of course castorium mm -hmm. Um, castor I love castorium. It's wow. amazing. I will let you try in a minute. Uh, so this is deep and dark. It's very ambery, and of course it's amber gris. So mm -hmm. it's rich. It's very rich. I mean, let ephemer will change throughout the hours. So at the beginning, it's quite juicy, dark rose. It's almost bloody. Yes, it's almost like that. I mean, the the whole idea behind this. Uh, Le Femme was for me to create a rose composition that would be worn by an operatic diva. Oh, wow. You know, so imagine you're watching uh, Bizet's Carmen, you know, and they could s trying to smell the air. Maria Callas. Yes, there you go. Mm -hmm. um, and so eventually it starts off deep and juicy rose and then transforms into violet and leather wow. and patchouli. Okay. And it's, it, it transitions to, throughout the day and then finally you're left with Lily of the Valley. Wow. So, very, very awesome. So it's incredibly complex. Very complex. Um, the next one that I have created recently is called Moonlight Reverie. That sounds, that sounds awesome. Thank you. And Moonlight Reverie is based around um, longing. You know, longing when you try to long for some, you know, something or someone, and you're patiently waiting. Mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes you reminisce by looking at the moonlight, or looking at the moon, or looking at the moonlit flowers, and you're reminiscing. And this is what this is about. And uh, Moonlight Reverie is a, is my most aldehydic composition. Oh wow! Um, and uh, this is the first composition where I use aldehydes. I've started, you know, um, as I'm. As I'm progressing, I'm learning more and more and trying to incorporate them into my compositions. There's a sparkliness about Yes, aldehyde. exactly. Almost like champagne. Champagne, yeah, bubbles. Yes, bubbles. So what happens is, from the base... A uh, camera girl is drinking bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So uh, with aldehydes, what happens is it lifts, adds lift from the base middle to the top. Oh, wow. So it's almost, uh, like you said, it makes the whole composition incredibly sparkly. Okay. Very small amount. And this one here is aldehydes, tuberose, orange blossom, gardenia, sandalwood, uh, sandalwood my soul, sorry, ambergris, so I'm trying to recollect the notes, vetiver, uh, iris, and uh, narcissus. Oh, I can smell the narcissus, I'm very sensitive. Wow. So, this here, I've tried to uh, expose the different facets of uh, of tuberose and um, and gardenia, especially tuberose. Because tuberose, I feel, you know, especially in the industry, it's only focused in one way: the lactonic, the lactonic facet, the, milky, yeah. the milkiness. So in here, I wanted to expose all the different facets: the milkiness, the the sweetness, the the, the etherealness. It also has this liver quality as well. Tuberose, you know. Yeah, really. for, where tuberose was, or, you know, this was exposed in uh, Robert P. Gay's Bondit, for example, you know. Um, so <laughs> it is something, uh, Moonlight River is something very close to my heart because I've put uh, a lot of thought behind this one, uh, a lot of energy. <laughs> it's very fizzy. Yes. Yeah. Tuberose. It's getting a little dark. I do, I do see the, the connection of the name. It's kind of a darker experience on it but it's it's not dark it's lit up with some light there yes yeah. Ooh, it's very nice so it's moonlight it's very clean too yes and this I'm is something the animalic parts will come out further like the animalic part is it, this one is not too animalic 
as it is right now in terms of, uh, in terms of animalics will be towards the end okay I'll so it's not uh, the most animalic one it is possibly this composition here is probably more, one of my most powerful ones because it is very very ethereal uh -huh. you know yeah. and uh, the silage from this oh, I for me I absolutely adore there's a floaty factor about it precisely yeah thanks to the um, what do you call it the aldehydes aldehydes yeah uh, next one that I have recently created is Le Do, number 17. Le Do? Le Do, which means golden hour. Okay. And uh, with this one here, I have tried to capture the, the moment between um, midday, so mid afternoon and sunset. You know, when the sky is lit up all golden and uh, you're trying to sit down, you had a uh, heavy lunch, you're relaxing on a leather sofa, you know, and the sun is, sunshine is just pouring in mm. and making everything golden. Oh, I like that. I sound like that. This one has got, it is very it, to me is a very classical composition. Um, Ooh, thank you. It's toasty. <laughs> it is a, it's reminding me of autumn. Yes, I love that autumn glow. You know, mm -hmm, me too. the sun goes down. Yeah, I love this one. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, with this one here, you have castorium, um, touch of oud, uh, frankincense, myrrh. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Jasmine, rose, uh, I said custom already, sandalwood, and tobacco. Wow, this one's really nice. Thank you. I would definitely wear this one. Thank you so much. Uh, now, your, your fragrances are only to be dabbed. Only to be dabbed. No sprays. Sprays are. Sh um, I'm currently working on uh, spray concentrations and, um, you know, um, so they should be hopefully ready in the next six to seven months. Oh wow! So, so we can get sprays. Fingers crossed, God willing. <laughs> and uh, just uh, at this present moment, we're just trying to finalize everything. So uh, this is good. Thank you. Lure door. Le door. Le door. Which means basically golden hour. Golden um, hour. I'll let you. It smells like the golden hour. Thank you. I'm glad I achieved what I wanted to achieve. This one here. Is, sorry, I put this out of my pocket. I'm literally like a walking, talking apothecary. My pockets are full of bottles and uh, ingredients and whatnot. I'm a crazy <laughs> person. Anyway, um, this one here is a. Re uh, it's still unfinished. Unfinished because I'm waiting to add the final ingredient to this. Mm. And the final ingredient will be Thai Fee Rose. And th this will be this year's cultivation of Thai Fee Rose. Wow, where would you get it? Straight from the Thai region. So you have a source to get it from? Oh, yes. Wow. I have a very good friend uh, who lives in Riyadh. And um, he will I be. I love Thai Rose. Me too. Um, I will be going. Uh, so he will be going to the Thai region, hopefully this week or next week, mm. actually, um, to, coll uh, to collect two distillations uh, of Thai Rose using two different processes. And uh, as you know, in terms of Thai Rose, it is exceptionally expensive compared, Very, yeah. to, you know, compared to, let's say, the average Persian or uh, uh, Turkish or Bulgarian rose. It's almost 10 times the price. Um, wow. So this one here is literally going to be my most it's pricey nice. work. Why is Taif rose expensive? Is it because it only comes from Taif? It only comes because it only comes from Taif, and unfortunately, a lot of producers from the Saudi, you know, from uh, from from Saudi Arabia, is quite r rather expensive. But especially Taifi, mm -hmm. you know, it is that uh, uh, what I've been told is is the only floral extract that's produced in Saudi Arabia. Therefore, there is a lot of prestige and also a huge demand. Um, especially by the royal families in the you know in the Gulf region, especially for of course by the Saudi family. Okay. Um, so this right now is ninety five percent finished, and this is basically it's called the composition is called Juraya. 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 And Juraya uh, means uh, Damascan rose. Is that Arabic? Yes. And I'm naming this composition after my friend in Riyadh. Uh, his um, his daughter's name is Juraya. Juraya. And because he's doing me this kind favor of obtaining the Thai fee rose for me, I'm get, you know I'm honored to call this uh, composition after his daughter. So the Thai rose is in here. There is a touch of Thai rose, but from 2000 uh, last year's cultivation. But 
I'm waiting to finish this off with this year's cultivation as well. Okay. But it's still, you know, very. Uh, thank you. This is an incredibly powerful composition. It is nearly 50% uh, Hindi oud, ambergris, um, three types of roses. Ooh. Yeah, chrysanthemum, mimosa, and a touch of civet. Wow. Um, it's the animalic type. Yes, <laughs> this one is very, very, this is incredibly powerful, incredibly punchy, and um, yes, it has, uh, I've been told by my friends who have tried it, it has got the so-called Khaliji signature. A Khaliji basically means the Gulf, the, you know, the Arab Gulf signature of, mm -hmm. uh, of Middle Eastern perfumes. I perfumes. can smell it in there. <laughs> <laughs> so it is a bit, it's actually not a bit, it's quite a bit animalic. Yes. But this oud has a chocolatey quality to it. Where's that coming from? That's also coming from ambergris itself. Oh, okay. Wow. So it's like it needs a little more rose, don't you think? That is that's the front. This is why I'm saying this is 95% ready. So I'm just waiting for the typhoid rose to be distilled, or rather, for it to arrive to my home. And once I finish that, this will be ready, and I should be releasing releasing this end of May. Oh wow! Yeah, I think uh, it's almost there, like you said. Yes. This needs a little more rose to tone down the correct the oud. I've just left it as it is right now I'm just wait you know it, the way I could describe this right now is is the is is the complete crown but missing the final main jewel mm -hmm. which is the typhi rose exactly right, yeah and once that arrives it will be a rose bomb wow yes it will be you know, yeah, I can't uh, wait to let's smell the finished product. I can't wait. You know, what I will do is once it's ready, uh, I can't wait for you to smell. So I'll try to send you, you know, some amount of food to try. Awesome. Uh, cool. Anything else? Any, f um, in terms of, so basically, I've shown you all the compositions that I've recently created. Also, you could also try incense. Incense. Um, I have had to, uh, or rather, I had to make a new batch recently, so it's different to my previous batches, and uh, it is uh, a lot more um, rounded and a lot more complex. And this is a solid floor, my only solid floor that I have, and it is 100% natural. This one. Explain to them what a solid floor is. Solid floor means one note. It doesn't go beyond. What it is. So if it's a if it's a rose solid floor, you will smell as a rose. If it's a jasmine, you will only smell a jasmine. And this is an incense solid floor. Wow, I like that. Thank you. And this incense, I've tried to make it very very different to the typical incense that you find in the market, which is very cold, churchy uh, incense. This one here, I've tried to um, use incense. Uh, the signature I've tried to incorporate is. This incense that you feel in the you know in the Middle East, uh, also uh, in the Far East, uh, in the in Indian temples or the uh, Buddhist temples. So why is there like an herbal quality to this? Herbal quality? Uh -huh. Because it reminds me of oregano. There shouldn't be. There. Uh, there's a dish in the Middle East called manish. Mm -hmm. you know, have you had that? I think you let me try that uh, in London. In the, the, the stuff they make it with the paste. Yes. It's made with oregano and it's made with sesame seeds. Mm -hmm. it kind of reminds me of that. I see what you mean. If there's an it, it could be, it could be that it is a. Mon actually, let me spell it again. I see what you mean. It is actually coming from the actual cedar wood that I used for this. Cedar wood? Yes. Oh, okay. Because cedar wood, certain cedar woods will have molecules that is found in, for example, basil or, or oregano. Wow. So, okay. A lot of naturals, when you use naturals, you know, you have to take into account that a lot, uh, they share molecules that it, am amongst that's themselves. The, that's the interesting part about perfumes. Mm -hmm. Certain things share molecules. It's like, what the heck? Very, very interesting. Exactly. It's, it's for example, you know, uh, a lot of some of the molecules that you find in jasmine, you find in in most of the other flowers, like uh, you know, rose, gardenia, uh, even lavender, for example. Wow. They all share. Uh, they, they all share certain molecules, but they're of course in different concentration. Mm. I like this one. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, next one, you could try. Do you like vetiver? One of my favorite notes. One of your favorite Everybody notes. Everybody knows that. I had a feeling. I, I know that as well. So I thought I'd just bring it up. Um, this one here is called Vetiver Blanc. And this is tuberose, 
Ooh, with vertebrae. Tuberose, gardenia, vetiver, and uh, ambergris, gatewood, sandalwood. Okay. Wow, that's an interesting combo, tuberose and vetiver together. Because tuberose has got, a, like I said before, has got a leathery, leathery facet to it, mm -hmm. and uh, also so does vetiver, you know, a nutty, leathery quality to it. So it's a good marriage, a good synergy. Great. Humble, I like yeah. this one a lot. Thank you. At first, the, the tuberose is quite big. It's a little more big than the, yes. the vetiver. That's the whole but idea. But now uh -huh. it's dominating. The vetiver is dominating. Yes. And the tuberose is in the background. I it, like it. In terms of vetiver blanc, it is more, more about the sum of the uh, of everything being used rather than just the vetiver itself but because I use a very high amount of vetiver in this composition I decided to just call it vetiver blanc and because also to my nose it smells quite uh, white well actually white I was going to say mm -hmm. it cleans up the vetiver yes the tuberose exactly. cleans up the vetiver because the vetiver can go very dirty exactly yeah um, and then are you a fan of uh, Japanese incense I like incense of all kinds. Good man. So do I. Unfortunately, I can't burn them at home because uh, my family then complained. So as a result, I had to create this composition after my favorite Japanese incense. It's called Nankun Kodo. And Nankun Kodo basically means seven wind. It is a very well-known in uh, incense by a company called Shoedo. And um, this composition itself, I made... Ooh. You like this one? Wow. Thank you. Wow. I love wearing this to go to sleep. Wow. That's amazing. Thank you. That you need to bottle. <laughs> wow, that's really good. Thank that's, you. Wow. This one I created uh, to satisfy my need for burning incense because I can't burn incense wow, at home. This smells different than regular incense. Jap you, need, have you, you need to burn some Japanese incense and you will see what I'm talking about. It's, it's more woody and it's bright. Yeah. Most Not Jap like your typical smoky, dark, no, no. resinous incense. No. Wow. And it's very uplifting and, very relaxed, uplifting, and yeah. relaxing. It just, I love it. it. To me, this composition truly zens me out. It mm -hmm. helps me focus. Well, I think I can see that. It's very uplifting. I know um, why you wear it to bed then. <laughs> and then another one you could try as well, if, uh, this also has vetiver in there, is it is swash. And I made this one. Where do you want it? Here? Okay. Oh. There you go. I made this one in homage uh, to. Which one's Irisoir? Irisoir is number two. So it's a dark iris? Mm. Evening iris? Oh no, it's not dark. It's not dark at all. It's a party of iris. That's why I called it Irisoir. And uh, Irisoir is my homage to my favorite iris composition which I smelt um, mm. you know two years nice. ago uh, Iris Gris by Jack Fat and um, before before the Larry the Fat Larry the Fat before Larry the Fat was created I you know I tried to create this to satisfy my hunger mm. you know for what I smelt at the Osmotech and um, so oh, this this is nice too. This really satisfies my hunger. Wow. Um, so in this you have three different types of iris distillations. Um, you have peach, uh, carnation, heliotrope, sandalwood, and... Uh, da, da, da. I can see that there's a fruity vetiver. touch to it. Yes. So it dries down to a vetiver? Um, it dries down to sandalwood and oris. Oh. The vetiver, what he's doing here is just giving, uh, giving the oris more of a, um, more of a base, if that makes sound, uh, if that makes sense, mm -hmm. and uh, so, and more of a structure. Okay, that's and, cool. And it's rounding the composition off totally. Yeah, my favorite so far is Nam Kun Kodo. Thank you. I love that one. Um, what do you want to wish to try next? Do I you think we should do one more. Go ahead. Cafe Ambre Noir. You tried that, do you remember, at the um, at the, uh, at the Lebanese place I took you. Oh. Um, and I said to you, try yes, the coffee. I did, I did. Try yes, the coffee did, and try yes. the baklava, uh -huh. and then smell this composition okay. and tell me what you think. Let's actually try the Jardin de Borneo Gardenia. Certainly. Because I, I like I love gardenias. Eleven, eleven, eleven. Like otherwise, otherwise I'm running out of space. <laughs> 
God, this one here has got gardenia on florage, a touch of violet, uh, oud from Borneo, uh, lots of sandalwood, ambergris, and um, Explain what enfleurage is. Enfleurage is, ba um, is a way of extracting the um, the oil, the essence, the essence of the flower. The way it works is you have um, you have a sheet, and the sheet is covered in. Um, typically, it used to be covered in lard, um, in lard, uh, or other fatty material, and then you know, flowers are arranged on top of this fat. Uh, after cultivation, straight after cultivation, mm. and then the, as the flower, uh, the flower basically slowly releases its essence, its soul, into the into the fat, and and uh, the fat absorbs it, and then eventually, this fat is scraped off and then um, distilled, distilled with uh, very alcohol. Process probably very expensive. <sighs> Incredibly expensive. It is. Uh, it is the most. I would say the most costly. Uh, distillate well uh, extra extraction process. Is it still done? You do find some artisan artisans that do do it, uh, but uh, it does cost a pre penny. Okay. Well, this is nice. It's very green. Yes. I wanted to make it into. I, I love. I'm a, I'm a big fan of greenery. Um, I'll let you try one more before this, and this because and you'll see that uh, why I love green so much. And uh, this green, I've, you know, when I was uh, when, when I was young, when I was uh, in my country, which was Bangladesh as a child, uh, I was exposed to a lot of greenery. And you know, living where I live now in London, which is quite grey and unfortunately it can be a bit dull, um, I need to have some green. You know, simulate some simulate some green within my life. Yeah, I love green too. Uh, Give me some green. You could try Le Rayon Vert, which means the green ray. Oh. And this one is got Galbanum, um, Gardenia, uh, Lily of the Valley, um, Sandalwood, Hyacinth. It's a very complex one. Oh, I don't want to give you my middle, middle finger. <laughs> How rude! <laughs> Actually, thanks for doing that. I don't know where to. <laughs> you know what? I could put here. it on me. All right, here. Here. Okay. We could do this as the last one, so that you don't get overwhelmed. There you go. Well, when you said green, I, I like the idea of green. Le rayon vert? Yes, the green What's ray. Rayon? Oh, rayon, okay. The green ray. Oh, wow. Very green. It's like a, a green shooting star. Yes. But the green subsides very quickly and gets creamy. Yeah. Like creaminess is taken over. Yes. Butter. The creaminess takes What's, over. What? Is is from the gardenia and sandalwood. Oh, okay. Wow. And on a Very base. Unique scent. On a base of uh, oak moss and um, uh, what else do I use? Oak moss and clary sage. I was gonna say there's something minty in there. Is that mint or is it clary sage? sage? Wow. Oh yes, I use absinthe. That's the minty. Okay. That's quite minty. This is green, yeah. Green energy. I love wearing this during summer. It's just so... It's refreshing. Refreshing and... Yes, uh, it's, it's a very positive composition for me. Wow. Awesome. So... so I, you run out of skin, so leave a bit. <laughs> <laughs> so will... Um, Will the subscribers win what we smelled, or is, it, is this something different? No, they'll smell. Uh, they'll receive everything they've smelled, and plus a bit more. Okay. Well, that's nice. Because I'll try to include sample of this once this is finished. Okay. So it will be a bit more, and uh, they will have, um, you know, they'll be able to experience the complete um, range that I have right now. Um, because of course these samples they constantly change because uh, because I make everything in small batches. And uh, they sell out very, very quickly. So I try to replace the, each one of the numbers with something new, and uh, possibly bring back what has been sold out in a future date mm. when I have the energy to recreate that composition again. Okay. So what, what's work, what are you working on? Are you making uh, sprays of the fragrances you said? So in terms of. Uh, in the next few months, it will, it will be extremely busy for me uh, because uh, 
you know, not only will I be doing my own compositions here, but I'll also be focusing in spray compositions of these. Um, and also, there there are collaborations that are happening, uh, thankfully. And you know, this is why I'm in Essence, and uh, I'm so happy and grateful that this year um, it has been exceptionally fruitful. Um, so do do keep your ears open and. Uh, We'll go from there. I'm very, very, very excited because some of these uh, collaborations, uh, I'm, I have, you know, they have been my heroes for many, many years, and now to be able to work with them, uh, what can I say, is a is a dream come true for me. Um, some of these are friends, close friends of mine, so I can't announce, unfortunately, right now, uh, fully who or what the collaborations are. Uh, but yes, just keep your eyes open. And uh, it's, uh, it's definitely an exciting time for me. And uh, I hope that uh, you will be excited for me to just uh, remember me in your prayers. There's some good stuff coming out, guys. Anything else we should mention? Um, that's about it, I think. I think because uh, there's lots of, uh, yeah, just the collaborations is happening and um, also you know, I will be, I'm also planning, this is the fun thing, when I'm doing the spray compositions, I will be uh, making the spray compositions totally IFRA, uh, IFRA compliant, so they will be available um, in, you know, uh, stores worldwide. Uh, so not o they won't be only just available exclusively via my website as they currently are right now. Um, but because they are fully, they will be fully compliant, they'll be available in uh, hopefully in sto different stores around the world um, so yes watch this space cool well thank you for doing this video it's a pleasure uh, as always yes uh, thank you for being you for sure being so lovely yeah of course guys do you have anything else to say i was about to say you said yeah i was like how modest <laughs> <laughs> guys Thanks so much for watching this video with Sultan Pasha. If you have any questions or comments, please list below. If you want to participate in our giveaway, please put down a comment below. Let us know why you want to win the samples and which of the fragrances we sampled today sounds the best to you. Please put your country down and make sure you're subscribed. And, and other than that, guys, please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye. Bye-bye. God bless.